Welcome in to Calling the Shots, presented by Blue Shark Vodka. We're here on Monday morning. UNC escapes Boone with a 63-61 win over Appalachia State. A crazy game. Uh, we're going to get all into it. First, we'll talk about Blue Shark Vodka, the smoothest vodka in the world. We want to thank them for their support locally in Wrightsville. Um, and they're supporting this show, Calling the Shots. A shout out to Blue Shark Vodka. As always, on Calling the Shots. I'm joined by Jeff Schottmer, former UNC linebacker and former UNC staff member. Jeff, what's going on, man? Ross, we got a lot to unpack, brother. That was uh that was a wild one, you know. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's one of the craziest college football games I've watched. I've watched a bunch. I know you've been a part of a bunch. What would you rank it up in terms of the craziness, especially obviously in the fourth quarter? Well, here's what I'll say. This was one of my first games as a fan, as a media member, you know, just observing the game you know, not either playing or coaching in it. So my stress stress levels were through the roof. I was more stressed watching that game than I ever been as a player or a coach. I mean, it was it was out of my control. I had no control of the game. So, you know, I, I'm going to have to get some advice from from fans around around the country on how to how to be able to watch UNC games and not have a heart attack. Yeah, that fourth quarter, the back and forth, like you were like, all right, there's 30 seconds left. They can't score here. And, of course, they go down and score. It was wild, a back-and-forth game. Uh, UNC had some good moments and some bad moments. We're going to get all into it here on Calling the Shots. Let's jump right into it. Of course, UNC wins. They moved to 2-0 and with a win over App State, 63-61. to Jeff, let's get into your initial thoughts, your initial takeaways, and we'll go from there. I mean, the first thing I got to say was, look, I, I called it earlier in the week, lock of the century. Never in doubt, right? Heels, the initial line was minus one. I think it jumped to plus three at the end, but – you know, we win by two. We cover. Gamblers, I hope you had a I hope you had a good Saturday there. Um, but all in all, I mean, it was it was a basketball game on grass, right? It was an NBA playoff game in terms of it was a game of runs, right? UNC had a stretch where I think they had thirty one or thirty four unanswered points, and App State scores, you know, twenty one out of twenty eight. You know, it was insane. It was it seriously was a basketball game on grass. The amount of points put up. Um, if you bet the over, I think you hit it in the third quarter. I mean, you you were safe, but uh, it was it was it was a crazy one. Yeah, I know you want to talk about Drake May and, and what you liked about the game. Any other initial takeaways, overarching themes? Obviously, we're getting to defense. Uh, is there anything else you want to like kind of touch on at the top here in terms of generalities? Yeah, I mean, it's this is the golden age of of Carolina football quarterbacks, right? You know, we go from Sam Howell, who is, in my opinion, and I think most Carolina fans. He's the best quarterback to ever play here. And, you know, he, he goes on, has a three-year stellar career, All-American, you know, All-ACC guy, and he goes and gets drafted. And then, you know, Drake May, he was, he was an unproven, you know, he was an unproven guy coming in. And then all he's done in the first two games is look like he's on trajectory to become the best quarterback along with Sam Howell. I mean, I, I can be bold enough to say it. That these first two games, he has looked like a combination of, three or four of the best quarterbacks to ever play here, right? He's got the running ability that Queese had. He's got the playmaking that Sam had. He's got the touch that Renner had. Um, look, we haven't even mentioned Mitch Trubisky, who's the number two overall pick. I mean, Drake May resembles all four of those guys. Yeah, Drake was 24 for 36 for 352 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, he completed 67% of his passes. And for the two games now, I wrote it down. Let's see if I can find it here real quickly. Uh, after two games, he's 53 for 72 for 76.6%, 646 yards, nine touchdowns, zero interceptions. He did have the fumble in this game. And in 16 rushes over two games, he's had 131 yards, 8.2 yards per carry, and one rushing touchdown. I mean, you saw Sam for his whole career. And obviously two games here with Drake. But it, it already feels like Drake – it's playing better at the same stage where Sam was for two games. Now, this is a very small sample size, but it, it, it comes together quick. He makes plays, the touch is there, the composure, the confidence. I mean, to compare those two, where do you think Drake is compared to where Sam was and where Sam kind of got to and where Drake can go to? Look, Drake has every attribute you want in a quarterback, right? He's poised, number one. His first true road game in a hostile environment, in-state rival, he goes in there and and we're down 21 to seven at one point in the first quarter. And he takes a big sack third and nine. He is cool, calm, collected, delivers a strike to hood. And, and we go down and get, you know, get points, you know, Drake just, he never flinches. 
He's athletic as hell. He makes plays with his legs. He, he navigates the pocket very well. Uh, his ball placement is is unbelievable. He had some downfield throws that were right on the money, you know, away from the defender where our, our receiver is the only one that can make the play. You know, he's 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 got great touch on the ball. Um, he makes the right reads. He, he, he throws the ball where the coverage dictates, which is for a young quarterback that is so hard to teach. He's just got that natural ability. He's so cerebral. He's tough as hell. We got to teach him to slide because he's taking some yeah. shots. But look, he's got everything you want in a quarterback, and he, he has all. He has. He looks like a, a future first round pick. Yeah, that's exactly what Mac Brown said after the game. He said Drake has everything but experience, and he has the high. The, the, I think that the height is, is coming in key because he's seeing over the rushers. He's able to see kind of the whole field, and like you said, place the ball perfectly. Some great touchdown throws. Some great touch on the ball, and then he can zip it in there as well. We've yet to see – he has a big arm because you see him throwing across the field. We've yet to see the big kind of bomb down the field that we saw from Sam early and often. Yeah. So wait to see that. He hasn't really attempted many, so you can't knock him on that. But uh, I think the, the deep ball and the deep ball accuracy, uh, jury's out on that. And you can see without Josh Downs, another big point on Drake is he spread the ball around. He hit Kobe uh, Pesor. J.J. Jones made some big catches in the first quarter. Bryson Nesbitt, Kamar Morales, the running backs. Like, he's spreading around. He doesn't care who's throwing it to. He's just getting the ball to where the offense, the defense dictates it should go, and he makes the play. Um, all right, your next kind of a takeaway observation early on here in the show. I think uh, – so Coach Brown talks about the middle eight segment of the game. Okay, so the middle eight is the last four minutes of the first half and the first four minutes of the second half. We outscored App 21 to nothing. I know, I know the fourth, fourth quarter was a was catastrophic. It was, you know, insane. But I think us winning the middle eight like we did was was very key in us winning that game, right? The defense got stops. Uh, the offense went down and scored touchdowns. Um, you know, the, the touchdown we had right before the half to, to Nesbitt was huge. You know, we go up 28-21. After we're down 21-7 to in the first quarter, we couldn't – defense couldn't stop a cold. Um, so just the momentum swings were crazy, but us winning the middle eight was a huge underrated piece of that game. Yeah. Going down get the touchdown late in the, in the second quarter was big. And then UNC's defense got stops, got, uh, the app offense off the field. App state did not score in the third quarter. And I think that's from some adjustments the defense made. Um, and obviously the fourth quarter, there were some adjustments made on both sides right. and it got loose there in the fourth, but. Uh, yeah, great point there. And Mac and, and Longo always talk about winning the, the middle eight, the, the first, the last four of the second quarter, the first four of the third quarter. All right. And in general, I know your last one here is the fact that UNC won. They won on the road. All you. Look, we haven't won a road game, true road game since December 12th, 2020, right? That Miami massacre where Javante and Mike ran wild, right? So us finding a way to win that game on the road, in-state rival, Drake's first road start, you know, hostility. I mean, look, you the, the name of the game in college football is to win the game. We're 2-0 and right now. Regardless of how many issues we have, we won the game, and we feel better about it going forward just because we got the dub. Um, but, look, you, you can't understate, you know, how important it is to win. And I, I know the monkey off Max back about beating App is he feels pretty relieved. Obviously, they're in there today, and – uh, trying to get some things corrected, but you know, I'll never under, underestimate the value of a win. Yeah, wins are tough to come by, <laughs> and to go through all that, and your record says two and zero despite the defense and what happened in the fourth quarter. UNC's victorious. I mean, two zero that's awesome. Heading into Georgia State, chance to be three and zero heading into the bye week. That's just big, and it's the confidence. Like to go through all that and then lose and play really well on some aspects, especially on offense, and to lose would be awful. The drive home. And then you got, you know, the defense is down, but you got the win. It's big. It's a road win. That's a tough environment. It was wild there, Jeff. Uh, the fans are rowdy. The student section was incredible. Um, when UNC went up 41-21, man, UNC was, was riding high, riding clear. Yeah. So fans started leaving um, in the wild fourth quarter. And Mac was very positive about that fact, the fact they did just get the win, happy to get the win. And I asked him kind of what – what can this do for a team's confidence? And especially for a young team, young quarterback, it's huge to, to come out with a win on the road. Okay, we're going to get into defense next. First one talks about Blue Shark Vodka. Online, Blue Shark Vodka, and on Instagram. Check them out. They're the sponsor of Calling the Shots with Jeff Schottmer 
a smooth vodka, easy, accessible, available in all 100 North Carolina counties. Let me read a little, little copy here. It's made from North Carolina sweet corn, distilled four times for perfection, a very smooth taste, small batch process. Um, let's see, the corn is distilled four times and the mash mellows for 28 days, allowing for the flavors to fully bloom and awaken. It's a great price point, accessible, great for tailgates, great for Bloody Marys as we kind of enter into the fall and the tailgating season. I saw a lot of people tailgating with Blue Shark Vodka before the FMU game. I saw it also in App State. I'm sure we'll see a lot at Notre Dame. So get that Blue Shark Vodka. Go to all your ABC stores and check it out. And make sure to tag Inside Carolina and Blue Shark Vodka to post on Instagram. Also available in some South Carolina towns and cities. Blue Shark Vodka, we appreciate Connor Barth. We appreciate, appreciate Blue Shark Vodka. It's a locally owned, independent company supporting Inside Carolina, what we do here on video and podcasts. All right, Jeff, here's why people are tuning in. They want you, the middle linebacker who was in the room last year. You've worked with Coach Chiswick. You've played defense. You've coached defense. Let's get to the defense. They gave up 61 points. They gave up 40 points in the fourth quarter. There are breakdowns all the place. Let's start with um, got your broad kind of takeaway on the defense. We'll get into the good, the bad, and the ugly, and kind of how UNC begins to fix this as they head into the bulk of the season and then ACC play. I mean, two things stand out to me, you know, take away scheme, because I think that's the most overrated thing that people talk about in football, right? There's two critical components to playing good defense. That's getting off blocks, block destruction and making tackles. And we didn't do either of that this weekend, right? It wasn't what coverage we ran, how many guys we pressured, you know, what coverage we were running, what blitz patterns we were running. It was two fundamental things. It was tackling and it was getting off blocks. So there was a stat that I read that it was App State ran the ball 41 times, I believe. On 10 of those plays, we had missed tackles. If we're missing big tackles on 25% of the rundowns, we're going to have issues because those, those tackles, we could be hitting them for, for a two-yard gain. Instead, we miss a tackle and it goes 12. Or we miss a tackle and it goes 21 yards. Or, or we see the catastrophic that Chiz talks about and, and it goes 50-plus for a touchdown. Right. We have to get that corrected. And it, it was from all levels of the defense. The secondary missed tackles coming from too high. Right. Geo Biggers, I saw he had a, a couple missed ones in the first half. Cam Kelly had a few. You know, Cedric Gray and Power Eccles missed tackles. And those are our two best tacklers. Um, so, look, we, we got to get that corrected. And that's just s- simple, fundamental stuff. So it, it wasn't, you know, we were running too much cover three or we were, we were running too much bracket. It was getting off blocks and making tackles. OK, let me stop you right there. Break down the key to getting off blocks and what has to happen for a linebacker, defensive end, defensive lineman to successfully get off a block. Like physically, what do they need to do? What does UNC need to improve on in that area? So I'll I'll start with the D-line. And and App has a good run scheme. So so they get in the pistol and they put the, the, the running back directly behind the quarterback. Okay. And what they do is they run like a stretch zone scheme that 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 Shanahan runs out in San Francisco. Right. The offensive linemen, they're on their tracks and they're just ripping and running left and right. And they're just trying to scoop out the D linemen from their gaps. Okay, so then the running back has so much room to create cutback lanes and 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 their running backs are talented. Number five was the fastest player on the field. We you and see how talented we are on offense. We could use his ability. He's that good. Um, But I I, I saw too many times our D linemen getting reached out of gaps. So say if if our nose guards in the A gap and the stretch play is going to the left and the center overtakes them, well, now there's two gaps for the linebacker to cover. And, and a good offensive lineman, you know, he's going to cover up, you know, our linebacker, and, and he can't make a play because there's two gaps, right? I'm not saying it was all the D-line because linebackers misfit and they miss, miss gaps as well. But it starts with the D-line. They, you know, simple as getting their hands inside, being physical and controlling the offensive lineman. If we're going to rave about how talented and, and highly re- recruited our defensive line is, I mean, it's time for them to start whipping some some offensive lines ass. You know, App State, generally, they aren't as highly recruited. They aren't as big as our defensive line. And, and we, at times, didn't look like we were controlling them. And, and that's an issue we got to it's, – it's, it's, it's an issue going forward. And, you know, it's hard to fix it in the middle of the season. It's game two, and, and, and we're kind of getting um, – we're not dominating the line of scrimmage yet, and, and that's, that's an issue. So is it a matter of just kind of winning your one-on-ones and taking control of the offensive linemen and, and getting that advantage so they can't do what they want to do? 
Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think maybe, you know, guys are peeking and trying to make a play instead of just, look, if I'm the nose guard or if I'm the three technique, if I'm the defensive end, I got to beat the guy in front of me and then I find the ball instead of, you know, I'm trying to, you know, fight off my blocker and peek at the ball. Well, if you don't take your attention to the block, you're never going to defeat it. So I think, and, I think, yeah. Yeah. And on, on, from what I did on offense, like what did they do that? I know you talk about the, the zone blocking zone rushing scheme, but they beat, beat UNC through the air as well. Like what, they, it, it seems like at times they could do whatever they want against UNC's defense. I mean, what's the concern? What's the issue there that we couldn't stop UNC couldn't stop the run or the pass. We couldn't. Um, Here's what App State does that's pretty effective in the throw game is uh, they get in condensed sets, right? So take the normal splits that you see from a traditional offense that most of the time you see see from our offense. You know, it's uh, two by two formations where, you know, there's a lot of space in between the two receivers. So App State, they did a lot of motioning to stack formations and it makes UNC defense use their coverage tools. Okay, so in the first day of install on a defense, you install a defense you know, with basic two by two formations with, with normal splits. So it's pretty black and white. Things start getting hairy when there's condensed sets and bunch sets when, when multiple guys get close together. So that you, that makes UNC defense use their quote unquote coverage tools where they have to communicate and, and essentially change the coverage on the fly. And at all levels of defense that happens. So don't think it's just UNC and coaching that does that. If you look at the NFL, you talk to any high school coach, when players get in restricted formation and bunches and stacks, right, that's the hardest thing on a defense because it forces them to change their coverage, essentially. Um, and, and the other thing I'll say is our cornerbacks, they didn't win at the line of scrimmage well. Last week I talked about them not being competitive at the top of their routes. This mm -hmm. week they were getting beat. If we were up in a press position, they were losing from the line of scrimmage, so now they're playing catch-up the whole time. So that's why you saw some uh, – PI calls. That's why you saw some fade balls, you know, them running by our corners. So we got to be more aggressive, get our hands on them at the line of scrimmage, and we got to win there. It seemed at times some of the cornerbacks were just a step behind. Like they're getting beat on end zone runs on some plays down the sideline, just a step off. That's why you got to win at the point of attack. Um, so missed tackles and getting off blocks. What can UNC do in practice this week? Like what's going to be the focus to improve that? Like, are there certain drills you do? Is it in the um, in the video room? Like, what are they doing to fix missed tackles and get off blocks to try to get better ahead of Georgia State? So, so the first thing they can do is, I mean, you've heard this, is, is tracking angles to the ball. I think when our secondary was missing tackles, it wasn't – it was more so that, you know, they were coming from depth, meaning, you know, the running backs in the backfield and the, and the safety is 10 to 12 yards off the ball, right? So he has to take the proper angle – and miss on the right way to to get the running back down. There was too many times where they weren't closing the space and there was just too much space between the safety and the running back. And he was kind of lunging or shooting his gun and, and, and missing. Look, it's going to happen like offenses. That's the, that's the hardest thing for a defense is to tackle a guy in space. But the, 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 the tackles that I saw were frustrating were the ones in the box. Right. If a linebacker has him squared up and he's he's lunging or, or, or the app state running back is spinning off our guys. Those are the ones that are, those are critical. Yeah. And, and give some props to the app state. I mean, that quarterback was good as much as we bashed him and people talked about how bad he was at Duke. He was really good. Yeah. Last year at app state. And at times he torched UNC. I mean, six touchdowns, uh, throwing the ball, the field, making some tough runs, not the fastest guy, but uh, Chase Bryce, I mean, he was he was pretty freaking good against UNC, and those running backs were awesome. The offensive line, man, they were talented, and at times beat beat UNC's defensive line. Let's get into the good, the bad, and the ugly about this defense. I know there were some positives you want to talk about. What was the good thing about this defense, or players that stood out to you? So the good thing was the the thirty minute stretch that we had where we didn't allow a point. So I think they scored early in the second quarter. Um, and then we went essentially 30 minutes of game action without allowing a field goal or a touchdown, right? That's yeah. positive. That's something you can build on. And it's something I think the coaching staff will go in and harp, you know, in the film room yesterday, today, and going forward. What did UNC do during that time? Were there any adjustments that you could see just in watching the game live? It, it was nothing schematic. It was, it was getting off blocks and tackling. Look, and we were in better position to cover the guys. Yeah. And I think we got a little bit more pressure on, on Chase but we, we were so inconsistent. We were so up and down from the defensive 
defensive side of the ball, right? They scored 21 in the first quarter. We can't stop a nosebleed. And then we go 30 minutes and, and we look like a, a very, very solid defense. Um, but, you know, consistency is the mark of a good defense. Um, we got to figure out quickly how we can channel that, you know, 30 minute segment of us playing really well and, and take it to the whole game. Yeah, and obviously that's when, when UNC went up 41 21. App State did not score in the third quarter, didn't score. I think they scored once maybe in the second quarter, maybe not at all. Okay, and then the players that stood out to you, a couple guys on defense that you liked. So I really liked Cedric Gray for about two to three quarters of the game. He played he played really well. I think he had 13 tackles and a big interception. Um, you know, he was he was running east and west and making plays, but he had a couple critical missed tackles. And for him to be our junior vocal leader, you know, he's got to clean that up just along, along with everyone on our defense. Um, and then the other guy that stood out to me was Noah Taylor. Um, he, he didn't have a huge game in terms of stats and production, but, you know, he, he's our most effective pass rusher. You know, he, he's a guy that we can send on the edge and, and just tell him to beat the tackle. You know, we don't have to scheme up things for him. And his, uh, his play on the, on the two-point conversion at the very end of the game, I mean, that was, that was big time. That was real big time. Yeah, no, Taylor. I mean, I, he had a, a chase down tackle early in the game where he flashed his speed, his change direction to chase down a running back um, for a little to no gain. Of course, the two point conversion to win the game at the end, uh, reading that play and tackling Chase Bryce, getting some help and assist from Cameron Rucker on that. Noah Taylor had a, had a big game as the, the grad transfer from Virginia, finished with three tackles and uh, 0.5 tackles for a loss. And Cedric Gray, you, you mentioned, I think you said he had 13. Um, yeah, 13 tackles, one interception. On that interception, can you discuss a little bit what he did on that? He dropped into coverage, read the play, and just picked it off. Yeah, so it, it was a play fake, right? So he got the line, uh, Chase Bryce got the linebackers to step up, but said had great footwork, right? He maybe took one or two false steps forward, obviously, because the run action, he's got to play a run gap. And then he, he kind of busted out and read the quarterback's eyes. And you can't teach you know, athletic ability from the linebacker position. He showed his receiver skills. He was a receiver in high school. Him him being able to go up and get that ball, most linebackers aren't going to make that play. You know, he's 6'3", yeah. long arms, and, uh, you know, great hands. You see linebackers all the time. They get their hands on a ball, and then they, they clap, and they're just shaking their head like, oh, I should have caught that one. But, you know, uh, said he, just, he made a great play there. And he talked about the post we – we talked to him in the postgame uh, press conference, and he was talking about, man, just – they needed to make a play. They needed to make a play. He made a play there. I did the ball back. Uh, I think he even had a field goal after that one. And then at the end, they made a play. So, I mean, that was the focus. Just get one play, one play, to get off the field and give the ball back to Drake May and the offense. Um, anything else on defense? We, we talked about the good, the bad, obviously the missed tackles um, and the ugly, you know, getting off blocks, getting off, um, filling the gaps, secondary. I mean, is there anything else in the secondary? I know you've called it atrocious to me twice now via text and on the phone. Um, what can the secondary do to improve? And you, you talk about the corners, anything else? It's yeah, it's, it's seriously fundamentals. I mean, look, it's the, the thing from the cornerback position is you have to look, you're going to get beat. You see it. If you watch any game in college football, like it corner is the toughest position to play on the defense, right? You're on an Island out there. And especially, you know, how we play, we're essentially in man coverage the whole time. So our corners, they, they got to win at the line of scrimmage. They got to get, get physical with the these receivers. So, you know, and then they compete at the top of the route. I think uh, we got to do a better job of finding the ball in the air and, you know, playing the receiver's hands. Um, but, you know, we got to limit the PIs. Th those are, those are killers. Um, yeah. And penalties in general, man, that really hurt UNC. Cause there are times when they, they made a play and it was third down and they're going to get off the field, but there was a penalty that happened multiple times throughout the game. I know Mac wasn't too happy with the officials, but the penalties, have to stop because it really it was there was the late hit by Cam Kelly. There was a yeah. PI by Legend Cavazos. There's a couple times where UNC and they could have won the game in the fourth quarter there by just getting off the field and not allowing App State to continue uh, driving the ball down and scoring. And that was a huge issue. So that'll be a, certainly a point of focus. So this week, as we kind of transition to this week, we're here on Monday. What is going on in that meeting room, um, the defensive meeting room? with Coach Chizik, Coach Warren, and the defense? Like, what do they see on tape, and how do they fix it and, and try to express to players what needs to happen to change to improve the defense heading into week three and Georgia State? So I think in, in any level of a coaching, I think if 
if your team is playing well, you can be more critical and harsh on the players just because, right, you got to win and you can try to correct the mistakes. When, when, when there are issues, I think you got to build them back up and, and, and harp on what they did well. Um, obviously, we got to fix the tackling and the getting off blocks. But like I said, there was a stretch of the game where we played really well for 30 minutes. So maybe they show those clips and then they show, you know, a, a portion of the, of the game where we were atrocious and, and couldn't stop anything. Right. And just show the difference. Look, guys, this is the same call. I called the same cover three. I called the same pressure and see how you guys executed and tackled and, and got off blocks. Like we said, it wasn't like the good plays that, that Chizik called were when we were um, in a different coverage. Right. It was the same coverage and scheme the whole game. But, you know, portions of the game we were tackling well and portions we were, were not. So what do you say to people who are being very critical of Gene Chizik right now? I mean, it's fair. It's fair right now. Um, you know, we've had two performances so far, and and both of them were – one was subpar and one was really, really bad. Um, so we got to get that fixed. And I, and I know that, that Coach Chizik is harder on himself than any fan will ever be. So, you know, they're not going to listen to the outside noise. Obviously, they know how many issues that they have. But, um, look, I'm still confident in, in, in us going forward. We got to get things fixed. But – we, we always allude to it. The talent's there. It's just we got we got to find a way to be consistent. Yeah, it's a matter of winning one on ones, being in the right position, making sure you're not out of position and then, and then making the tackles individual play, like doing your your one job, and whether that be a cornerback, safety, a linebacker, a defensive lineman and making that play. Um, yeah. So touching on that, I mean, be positive with them. You can kind of coach them a little. And Mac talk about how when you have a win, you can coach them harder. You think building their confidence back up, not being as negative is the key. I mean, you see how that how they transition into Georgia State, a tough matchup for the Tar Heels in Atlanta. Um, OK, anything else on the defense you want to touch on? Is there anything else you think needs worthy of discussion before we kind of move to the Georgia State game and our game balls for the week? Yeah, so the, the one key drive, I think, kind of changed the game going into the fourth quarter was uh, right after Drake fumbled. You know, the, the ball is in the App State territory, right? So UNC has a sudden change, right? The defense just got to stop the previous drive. They're they're resting up on the bench. They think UNC offense is going to go down and, you know, have a four to ten play drive. But they have a sudden change, and boom, they got to get right back on the field. What, what I got to challenge them and what Coach Chizik is going to challenge them to do is, is they got to find a way to get a stop or hold App State to a, to a field goal attempt. Right. They, they let App State go down in four plays right after we give a, a, a turnover to them and, and go score. And that completely flips the momentum of the game. Right. We were, I think we were up 13 at that point. If we hold them to a field goal, look, they might miss it. We might block it. And if they make it, we're still up 10. Instead, now they score. They get the crowd back in the game. And, you know, they're, now they're only down a touchdown. So I think we got to play situational defense, and that's what Coach Chizik preaches a bunch. You know, when there's a sudden change, we we got to we got to bow up and make a stop. Yeah, that was huge. You could feel the momentum shift because App State had just scored. It kicks the ball off, and then Drake May fumbled his first turnover of his career. App State scores quickly, so it's a 14, 14 point flip. Completely changes the game. Gives them momentum. Gives them life. This was after UNC was up forty one twenty one. Maybe they kind of had, you know pushed the brakes a little bit. The the the, the you know the they weren't going as hard or something, but I'm not phrase that. But that was a huge flip in the game, and it was caused by a fumble. UNC's inability to get off the field or at least force a field goal. And then UNC ended up kicking some field goals in the fourth quarter instead of getting touchdowns. Coach Brown talked about that, the need to put it in for seven instead of selling for three um, there in the I'll, fourth quarter. I'll, I'll say something about that. I mean, when you score 63 points and, and we're you know kind of complaining about how we need to put it in, put the ball in the end zone as opposed to scoring or kicking field goals. Like that's splitting hairs right there. But right. Uh, Noah Burnett, I want to give him a shout out. He was, he was a scout team receiver last year. We used, really? him, we used him on the scout team to run routes, you know, cause he was the third or fourth string kicker last year. You know, he wasn't getting reps in practice and we needed another receiver just cause you know, injuries happened throughout the year. And Noah Burnett was running routes, you know, against our DBs last year. So, and, and to see him kick two field goals, 240 plus yarders, you know, critical on the road, hostile environment, like good for him. Kudos to him. Awesome. All right. The game balls, Jeff, 
who do you want to give? I know you want to give kind of two out here on offense. Your offensive game ball is for the App State game. I, I told you two earlier. I, I'm going to go with Drake May. I have to. I have to do it again. I mean, he's he's the leader of the team right now. You know, they're rallying around him. I saw I saw a point in the third quarter. You know, I was watching the TV copy, and he's he's over on the sideline commanding his offensive line, and, and he's got the skill position guys huddled around him, and he's taking charge and taking leadership. And you know, he's doing all the right things, making all the right plays. We're going to go as far as, as Drake May carries us. There's a sense of confidence now that if he gets the ball, he can bring the offense down and score. There's this confidence now. He's a playmaker. Kind of you felt with Sam. Like, if there's any amount of time on the clock, UNC has a chance to go down and score. Also, know you want to talk about the running back room. Let's go ahead and get that. I know you want to talk about the top of the game. We missed that. So, your thoughts on the running back room. Three different players scored. Um, and, of course, they used, I believe, four running backs against uh, App State on Saturday. The running backs were special. And they're all young. They're all young and talented. Um so we start the game. It was pretty telling. Hampton, is he takes the first carry, right, and well-deserved after the last game he had. But the fact that we have that much depth and, and, and different skill sets, right? Caleb Hood touches the ball eight times and has over 100 yards, right? He, he, he helped us in the run game and the throw game. Uh, you know, Petaway gets in there, makes, you know, two explosive plays, has a 20-plus yard touchdown. Uh, I mean, and then obviously Hampton is the bruiser. We, we hand it to him on the goal line. He scores. DJ Jones has a has a reception touchdown, a huge one in the fourth quarter to put us up late. Uh, I mean, the skill set in that room is pretty special. And the fact that we can roll out four different guys, right, as the game goes on, the, the same linebackers and secondary on the opposing team are playing. If we can roll four guys in and keep them fresh, like, that's, that's pretty – it's a good luxury to have. Caleb Hood, eight – Caleb Hood, six carries, 87 yards, uh, that big 71-yard run. Uh, George Petaway was explosive, six carries, 34 yards, one touchdown. That I mean, when he gets an open field and makes one guy miss, another guy miss, I mean, it's pretty special. You have to be excited about what George Petaway is going to do in a Carolina uniform. Martin Hampton gets a start, not the biggest game, eight carries, 17 yards, and the one touchdown after the Caleb Hood big run. And DJ Jones, I want to talk about his big play. He only had two carries for three yards, but the biggest play of the game – Probably the, the, one of the game-changing plays of the game was the catch, the 42-yard touchdown run after the catch. Let's break down that play, if you could, Jeff, and what you saw out of Drake May, the App State defense, and then how DJ Jones scored there. Yeah, the first thing, it starts with a play call. Coach Longo, he's I know he's taking some flack for, for certain scenarios, but he called a hell of a game. And in that moment, he called an unbelievable play, right? We're running a misdirection wheel route out of the backfield. Um you know, great play call by him, but but it, it starts with Drake May, right? He stood in there, had it was a longer developing wheel route because it was coming out of the backfield. So he had to hold the ball a little longer with pressure in his face and deliver a beautiful strike to to DJ down the seam. You know, his his ability, and I think you alluded to it, you know, his height, right? He could see over the, the pressure in his face, stood in there, tough as hell, took a shot, but delivered a beautiful ball to DJ. And, you know, DJ had a walk-in touchdown, but um, – that just shows you how impressive Drake May is. Yeah, App State brought the house. And was DJ – so he was designed to go out, or did he block a little bit and then go out? What, what's that play? What is he supposed to do on that play when they know they're bringing seven or eight rushers? Yeah, so he's he's the one of the primary, uh, you know, options on the on the wheel route. You know, I think we had a guy in jet motion. He kind of comes in the flat. And we have a play fake. So, obviously, it's a longer developing route because to get out of the backfield, it, it just – you're not, you're not as close to the line of scrimmage, so it takes longer to develop. So, I mean, that was – Drake Drake knew that that was his initial target on the play, but he knew he had to, you know, hold on the ball a little bit longer because it, it takes longer for, the, you know, the running back to get up the scene from the backfield. And he lost it up, enough air to, to give D.J. Jones time, and then all he saw was green, huge touchdown pass there. My offensive game ball, I'm going to give to Kobe Pesor. Stepped in for Josh Downs. We haven't missed Josh Downs. He obviously didn't play. Didn't seem like they needed him. Kobe Pesor, the red shirt, freshman from Kings Mountain, um, you know, eight catches on eight targets for, I think, 92 yards and a touchdown. Four, four third down conferred versions for UNC. He was huge throughout the game. Um, I thought he stepped in very, very well for Josh Downs. And that that wide receiver room, now they may be a little thin now without Antoine Green, without Josh Downs. They have talent. They have young talent. Gavin Blackwell, J.J. Jones, Kobe Pesor, and you throw Bryson Nesbitt in there who have – one touchdown catch, um, I think four catches for the game, and a, a big 
run in after the onside kick. The Kobe Pesor gets my game ball on offense. And then defense. I think we already touched on this. Uh, your defensive game balls, Jeff. I mean, it's hard to give a game ball when you give up 61 points and 600 plus yards of offense. But uh, I mean, the most critical play of the game was the, the, the second two point conversion. Um, so I'm going to give it to Noah Taylor. He did a great job. He was he was the five technique to the side of the run. Um, he closed the C gap down hard. That's his gap. And then uh, quarterback obviously pulled the ball. And, and Noah did a great job of redirecting out laterally, staying flat down the line of scrimmage like he's coached to do. And, and his athletic ability helped, helped make that play. Um, and then obviously Rucker coming from the backside, great effort. You know, Rucker's always a guy that shows great effort. But Noah Taylor was the reason that that play was made. Yeah, Rucker cleaned it up, coming from the opposite side to, to make sure that Chase Bryant didn't get in. I'll give it to Cedric Gray. You talked about him already. No need to harp on him. 13 tackles, excuse me, one interception. All right, moving on. As we wrap up App State and go to Georgia State, a 12 p.m. kickoff on Saturday in Atlanta on ESPNU. Georgia State Panthers coming off a 35-14 loss to South Carolina. They did lead in that game. Um you know, how is UNC feeling now to know what's the vibes in the in the locker room, in the meeting rooms heading into this game, the third game of the season for the Tar Heels? Well, I mean, it's positive. Look, 2-0, and like I said earlier, it's it's the goal in college football is to win each game. And you could see how, how much they were celebrating the locker room after the game. You know, they, they were hyped. You know, the offense, they look great. Um, obviously, we need, to, we need to fix some things on defense. But um, Georgia State, they present some issues. You know, especially the way we play defense this past game and um, the, the run schemes that Georgia State will run. They, they do some some uh, pistol formations just like App State. So they're probably, you know, watching our tape and licking their chops because, you know, they they honestly do like a spread triple option type offense. And, you know, we played them last year at home and um, they did put up some rushing numbers against us just because, you know, that they like I said, they have some uh, crazy tendencies where they're, you know, misdirection stuff and, and and the quarterback's able to run and you know anytime the quarterback's able to run against unc defense it hasn't been good so uh we got we got a big big test on defense and it's another road game i mean it's another challenge on the road uh, a good chance to, to get another road win build some confidence and, and get to three and know let's see if there's anything else on georgia state here yeah so the, the big grand game from them um i mean what's the i don't know i think we already talked about this but the mood in the locker room it's just back to work you know, you gotta be happy about the offense and try to improve on defense. All right, Jeff, anything else before we close this out? Yeah, I just think talking about Georgia State again, you know, so we're playing on the road in Atlanta at a group of five school, you know, that doesn't really happen much in college football and we're going back to back weeks. So um, our guys, you know, they got to bring their own juice to, to get up for that game. There's not going to be a huge crowd at, at, at the stadium and, you know, I think it's in a baseball stadium, so it'd be kind of like a weird configuration. But um, look, we, we got to find a way to, to jump on them early because if they can hang around and, and, you know, score some points, then who knows what can happen. You know, I fully expect us to win this game. I expect our defense to come out and play a lot better because I know Chiswick's getting on their ass this week. But look, it's it's a big test for us, and, and that's all you can ask for in a college football is another opportunity to, to kind of fix what you, you messed up in the last two weeks. The line opened up at UNC Fair about eight, eight and a half. It's moved around a little bit. I saw seven in one book. So it's sitting right there at eight, eight and a half as UNC heads down to Atlanta. They get this win. They move to three and oh. You have the bye week. It's a good chance to get Josh Downs back, Antoine Green back. And another guy that we have never mentioned on the show, Jacorius Conley, has a chance to come back. Not sure exactly where he is in his recovery. But he could be an option of safety. He's a guy, a very sure tackler. Um, but look, it'd be interesting to see what happens if he does come back at some point in the season with uh, Geo Biggers and Cam Kelly at safety and how um, um, Jacorius Conley fits in. Another player that's, that's done well is DeAndre Boykins. Uh, he might have missed some tackles as well, but he's been a, a good player for UNC, so he kind of figures in that defensive uh, backfield there. All right, Jeff, we good? Anything else? I think that's it. All yeah, right, man. We'll, uh, have a good week. Yeah, so calling the shots. We appreciate y'all listening. Presented by Blue Shark Vodka, the smoothest vodka in the world. Um, all the uh, the smoothest without the bite. Out of Reitzel, local, independent. We appreciate Blue Shark Vodka for their support. Check them out at your local ABC store. Tell them Inside Carolina sent you. 
For Jeff Shotmer, I'm Ross Martin. We appreciate you listening to Calling the Shots.